I just got done listening to Michaela Peterson on the Joe Rogan podcast, and I wanted to clarify a few things on the carnivore diet, mainly the concerns about nutrient density, as well as correct a few points that they talked about. And I guess I might as well summarize the podcast while I'm at it. So, you know, for about the first hour, you know, Joe kind of started with, oh, so you and your dad are on this wacky diet. She gets into how she started this diet, and this took about an hour, just her talking about how she started the elimination diet, her past problems, and... Then about an hour in, what was brought up was the concern about nutrients in the carnivore diet, particularly vitamin C. Joe Rogan was saying, oh, this diet is deficient in nutrients. And he asked her about her blood work. And she said her blood work, she was deficient in zinc and vitamin D3. And that she actually tried supplementing vitamin D for about a year and it didn't work. And that, and the thing is, meat is very high in zinc. So this didn't make sense to me. So what I figured was she either was supplementing the wrong form of vitamin D. Maybe she wasn't supplementing D3. And she didn't have the precursor vitamins to metabolize it because vitamin D3 also requires vitamin A, vitamin K2, magnesium, a bunch of other vitamins that she may have been deficient in on her diet. Uh, definitely something to consider about her blood work because on a carnivore diet, if she's in the sun, those are the last two vitamins that should be deficient in. And then they, they brought up how Sean Baker had low testosterone. The guy deadlifted 800 pounds 10 years ago. I think there's a few more things we need to talk about than just diet here. Uh, then they went into kind of like sauna and cryotherapy benefits. Uh, and then he brought up something that his friend sent him on the carnivore diet, talking about how a diet with less nutrients might be immunosuppressing, which might be helping. But that's actually contradictory because the carnivore diet is incredibly high in nutrients. They just don't know that. And, and his friend also said, the diet is very deficient in vitamin A, which is not true. The carnivore diet has vitamin A in the form of retinoic acid, especially in incredible amounts in liver and any high quality animal foods. He said it had no vitamin C, but vitamin C is in liver in high amounts, certain organs, fish. Same with vitamin E. It's in, Liver is has all these vitamins they were concerned about not getting. Vitamin K as well. Vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K, liver has in abundant amounts, and there are other various even eggs, for example, have all of those vitamins besides vitamin C. Uh, salmon row, fish eggs, for example, have all of those vitamins. Every single fat-soluble vitamin is present in certain animal foods. But, you know, they're following an all-beef diet, not necessarily a carnivore diet. A carnivore would pretty much be eating nose to tail. And then they brought up that nutritionists kind of wanted people to be freaking out, but the opposite is happening. And they were like, oh, why, 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 isn't this, why is this happening? Well, you know, if you knew about the nutrient density of these foods and why the diet works, maybe you'd be able to explain it. And then they went into how she, you know, when she consults people, she just kind of tells them how she cooks and people wanted to see that she's alive and healthy. And what I was excited about was she brought up a book uh, by Bjarne Stephenson called Fat of the Land. And this guy was an Arctic explorer, I believe, in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, not 100% not sure on the years, but she said that, oh, they pretty much only ate meat and eggs, but that's not true. When He primarily ate fish, uh, a lot of very fatty uh, caribou, things like that, a lot of organs. That's primarily what they ate, and that food is multiple times more nutrient-dense than the beef that people are eating now on this diet. And, you know, she, I mean, if she read that book, she would have known about the nutrient density of animal foods. She would have known how they prized certain parts of the animal. And then she brought up a study they did on them where they only ate meat for a year. But if you read that study, they ate liver, they ate a lot of fat, they ate a lot of lamb, foods that are much more nutrient dense than the beef that she's eating now, the grain fed beef. So, uh, you know, she didn't really read that book all the way through. I don't know if she only just read a few pages or someone told her about it. But, you know, I got excited that she was going to bring it up. And then she didn't really deliver on the information that's actually in that book. And then they started talking about how uh, inflammation can be caused by certain foods and how much of a difference it makes. Uh, she started talking about how she's not trained and Joe mentioned, oh, are you going to get dietitian training or anything? And she was like, oh, no, they still say that grains are good for you. But there is a lot of information to be learned in dietetics training in regards to metabolic function and what foods contain what vitamins. So there's definitely some to be learned. And what's also worth mentioning is she was, they're so against grains, but grains were consumed by nearly every indigenous civilization in some degree, but they were prepared in certain ways, whether sourdough fermentation or, you know, every group had their own preparation of certain grains and certain foods to make them more nutritious and have less negative things in them. 
Uh, and then she didn't really bring up the anti-nutrients and vegetables, but uh, that does actually come up later. Uh, they brought up the vitamin supplementation thing again. Uh, she said, oh, no, I don't take a multivitamin because of the additives and the vitamins, but she didn't know too much about the negative things that could be in the vitamins. And the main negative thing is the stearates, like magnesium stearate, vegetable stearate, which are oxidized vegetable fats that are used to bind the pills together. Uh, that's definitely something worth mentioning that she didn't know. Uh, then they kind of went into how maybe people haven't run into problems on this diet because it, it works short term, but not long term. And that's not necessarily true. They've been talking about someone who's been on this diet for 20 years for parts of the podcast. And then they kind of got into the debate about how, why this diet is better than keto. And she was like, oh, this diet is way better than keto. And Joe asked her and she was like, oh, well, I don't know. And I think the problem here is that Joe kind of pushed her to really give out some solid information on the carnivore diet. And she kind of went in there just with the anecdotal information and just to kind of talk about herself. So definitely a conflict there. And she did bring up toxins and vegetables and she said oxalates and lectins, but she didn't know that they were normally classified as anti-nutrients as well as what those specific, the specific function of oxalates were like binding to calcium, magnesium and taking them out of the body and things like that. And the main reason that zero carb is better than keto is because it tends to remove dairy. It removes all those plenty plant foods that can cause inflammation. Overall, it's much less inflammatory and slightly higher in vitamins for the most part. So to just summarize, uh, the main problem with this is that someone needs to tell Joe Rogan, please guys, that the elk liver that he's eating every day has every vitamin that your body needs. And this doesn't just include vitamins A, D, E, K2, C. It includes all the minerals, all the elements, all of those things. Uh, we need to really get the importance of the nutrient density of the carnivore diet out there. And once it's understood that this diet is the most nutrient-dense diet, if you eat the right foods, organ meats, high-quality pasture-eats, animal foods, then we can start to discuss the possible benefits of, you know, how beneficial is removing all these foods from your diet, uh, why, it, what foods should we be eating, you know. But it needs to be known that there are no nutrient deficiencies on this diet because that seems to be the glaringly obvious problem that people like to poke at. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this saves some of you guys like two or three hours. I know I was... I can't believe, I, I was like a little disappointed. I sat down and listened to this. Uh, but above all, guys, if you could share this video, please do. Uh, if you'd like to support me, you have various social media and, and other things in the comments. And uh, hey, let me know what video uh, you guys would like to see in the near future related to the carnivore diet. I'm definitely going to do one touching on the nutrient density tomorrow.